Normally, I start all my videos with reminding you to subscribing to my channel, but I'm not gonna do that today because today's video is all about saving time and hopefully some frustration as well. More precise, I'm gonna share my top 10 must know things about Bamboo Studio, specifically for brand new Bamboo Lab A1 and A1 Mini owners. And in case this is the first time you even hear about Bamboo Studio, then I assume that you have already downloaded it, it's on your computer, and then you realize that you have no idea what you're doing been there, done that. Uh, so before we start with all the different tips and tricks, let me just give you a super, super quick recap on what this actually is. So this is Bamboo Studio, which basically is just like the map over your plate and hopefully how the object will look like after it has been printed on the, for example, Bamboo A1 or A1 Mini. The object is whatever file you have here. You can go into Maker World. You just click open in Bamboo Studio. You should see something similar to this. This is the Benchy model in this case. You can just click on your mouse, then circle around to see the object in, in all the different angles. And since we're now working with 3D and 360 degrees, uh, you can literally see like 360 degrees as well, which can be a little bit confusing and, and overwhelming in the beginning. But down here at the bottom, you do have a cube that you can also click and drag, which kind of gives you a little bit uh, more orientation to, to know where you are in, in this mess. Uh, and you can also click on it, for example, the front, or you can click on the top to go straight in and see a, a flat view from the top or from any one of the other sides. But there are also tons of other, probably much better videos covering the absolute basics of Bamboo Studio. So we are gonna focus on the different tools and all the different functions here on the left side today. And we're gonna start with the holy trinity of keyboard shortcuts, mainly the rotation, scale, and arranging products on the plate. Uh, if this sounds too basic for you, then feel free to skip ahead because we are gonna cover hopefully some more complicated and uh, much more cool things later in this video. But if we do want to cover the basics first, then we do have all the tools up here with the rotation tool up here or R that opens up this gizmo as it's called or this little 3D circle with a bunch of, of different strokes. And all you have to do is just click on, on one of these axes and then you can rotate the object on this plate. You might have already noticed that there are two different kinds of rotation values. One is relative and one is absolute. So what is the difference? Great question. So the relative rotation is based on how this object, in this case the Benchy, this boat, uh, is positioned right now. Whereas the absolute rotation value is based on the original value of this design or this object or this boat. So as an example, since this is the original value, if you just drag this file into Bamboo Studio, if we do change the relative value with, for example, 10 degrees on the X axis, then the boat will almost tip over with 10 degrees. Now, if we are adjusting this with an additional 10 degrees on the X value, then it will continue to rotate 10 more degrees. But if we instead do this with the absolute value of 10 degrees, then the first time it will tip over to this 10 degrees. But if we do it a second time, now we're only telling Bamboo Studio to change the value to 10 degrees, but it already is 10 degrees, so nothing will happen. So instead, in order to change it to the exact physical location as it was, we need to put it at 20 degrees. So 20 degrees absolute value is the same as two times 10 degrees in relative value. Hopefully that makes sense. Next shortcut is S for scale, which uh, you guessed it, will scale the item up. If you take one of these corner blue little cubes here, you scale everything proportionally. Whereas if you take one of these side uh, boxes here and you drag along, then it goes super wide or in this case, super long on this angle here. And very much related to scale down in the corner, you do have the actual size of this physical product. And I use this all the time in order to see just how how long or how tall or how wide one specific object is. But again, let's take everything from the beginning since we do have a lot of different options here. Scale in terms of percentage and size in terms of millimeter in my case, I think that is quite straightforward. And you can of course turn on and off the uniform scale. So for example, if you want to have the Z axis to 90% with uniform scale on, then everything turns to 90%. Whereas if you want to make some adjustments to, for example, 200% with the uniform scale off, 
then it's only the, the Z axis in this case that will be adjusted. But of course, there are so many more things we can do with these tools. So here we have the world coordinates and here we have the object coordinates. What is the difference you might ask? Great question. World coordinates is just exactly how the world in or in this plate in this case looks like, meaning that it, it is exactly as you're seeing it. If you change anything, on the X axis, let's say we move this to 80%, then it's the X axis. And in case this X, Z and Y scale is very confusing to you, then uh, I totally understand. I just look at the colors, to be honest. Here we have a red X and here we have some red cubes. Here we have a green Y and here we have some green cubes. It's literally not more difficult than that. So uh, we're now gonna change these red cubes. So we press the red X, let's move that to 100%. And since we don't have the uniform scale on, then it's only the X values or the red values here that changes. Whereas we go to Y and we move that to 100% as well. And then we move Z down to 100. And all of that just to get back to where we originally started. But we then have this object coordinates. And what does this do? Well, let's try. Let's change the X values to 50%. And then we change the Y values to 50%. And then we change the set values to 50%. Now we have, again, a 50% boat. So we can zoom in a little bit and it looks exactly the same. But the reason for why you think that this function is completely useless right now, that is because we first need to go back to the rotation tool and change, for example, this side here. This is where the scale object coordinates comes in. Because if we now, with this object already like tilted or rotated, the world coordinates for a Z axis. And by the way, if I do mispronounce the Z or Z or, or however you call it, I do apologize. I'm not a native English speaker and I was taught British English growing up, which is something that I've tried to uh, unlearn throughout the years. But what I wanted to say is uh, if we do change the blue value here in world coordinates, uh, we of course will change this height. Let's just call it height. But if we go back here and we change the object coordinates instead, and we would go in and change the height of the object to 200%, then Bamboo Studio will actually change the actual object's height, which is from the original values on how this object was originally placed on this plate. I hope that all made sense and I didn't make it more confusing because we do have one more shortcut and a lot of more tips and tricks to teach you in this video. So please bear with me. We do have, last but not least, the arrange object, which in order to demonstrate this, we do need to make a few copies, just like any other program, just command C or control C if you're still on a Windows computer, uh, and then command or control V to just paste a lot of different objects or a lot of the same object. And then all you have to do in order to arrange this a little bit better, because as you can see here, there are actually some boats that will be cut in half if we try to print this out right now. Uh, we then select everything with command or control A, and then all we have to do is to click on arrange all objects or simply the shortcut A. And then Bamboo Studio will then arrange everything for us so everything fits on one single plate. In case you are a little bit greedy and you want to make even more uh, benches in this case, you can see here there is one that is just not gonna physically fit on this plate. You can then highlight everything and you press A again and we now have a second plate with this extra benchy. But believe it or not, we can actually do all of this even faster with just one single click or technically two clicks. So I'm just gonna remove all of these benchies and just drag this over here. All we have to do is to right click with this object selected. And then we have this, I think, secret menu. It took me like a week to find out that you can just right click and, and see this. With the first option being fill a bed with copies. And then what Bamboo Studio does is, uh, even filling it up with, with more than the entire bed. Uh, so I guess we do need to just highlight everything and then press A in order to automatically arrange everything once again. So, okay, I do apologize, more than two clicks, but uh, yeah, much, much faster. Next up is something that took me way too long to figure out and also something I talked about previously on the channel. And that is that when you are changing a nozzle in the physical Bamboo Lab A1 printer, for example, you do need to change the nozzle in Bamboo Studio as well. And it's not enough to just change it here that is related to the print settings. You do need to change it related to the printer settings as well. And you do that under the device 
device menu and then going over here to printer parts or you simply can select the type of nozzle and also the nozzle diameter and then all you have to do is to close the window and then go back to the prepare page and then continue slicing your plate or continue with the rest of your design but speaking about the device menu right next to it you do have something called a multi device and maybe you haven't seen this before that is because you actually need to go into bamboo studio into the settings and then you have to activate the multi device management and also restart the studio if you haven't already now needless to say you do need multiple devices in order to actually take advantage of this feature and at least for now you also need to be using the external spool and not the AMS light. But basically how this works is that when you do design and you, you slice a plate, uh, you can just, instead of hitting print plate right away, you can choose to send to multi-device and then you will just send the same file to both printers in my case. But again, it, this only works with the external spools right now. So although I do have two A1s with two AMS lights installed, it doesn't work because I'm currently not using the external spools. Something else that also took me way too long to find, uh, maybe this just tells you more about me than Bamboo Studio, and that is this small little menu section that is hiding in plain sight regarding to the project filaments. Here is where you can choose the flushing volumes, which basically all you have to do is to just recalculate. I haven't had any single issue and what this does is that it just calculates how much extra filament needs to be pushed out in between the different color changes. For example between white and red, between red and white and you can also add a, a multiplier here which is how you actually change these values. Basically just go with, with recalculate, let Bamboo Studio do its job. You will waste more filament than necessary I believe but it is a small price to pay I would say instead of like having a 24 hour our print ruined with some like bleeding into some parts of, of the print but sometimes I do realize that I do actually need to go in and recalculate I don't know why it doesn't save the files but when I do change the colors I, I always go in here flushing volumes recalculate and I have never had a problem and right next to the flushing volumes this little uh, icon right here that is where you click to synchronize your filament list from the AMS so for example if you would download a 3mf file drag it into Bamboo Studio then Bamboo Studio will automatically update the project filaments to the colors that the print design had. So you had then have to go in to the synchronized filaments and then either map or I usually just go with overriding and then it will take whatever color you have in your AMS already and then it will just throw it into Bamboo Studio. All you have to do, you see the numbers here, one, two, three, four. You can select one of them. You press, for example, number one for gray, which it was already gray, so you didn't see anything. Uh, or you can press number two for black or for, for pink. And then you can literally decide how you would want to have these different colors. And while on the topic of printing multiple parts at the same time, something that I tend to do, if you're printing like a whole plate of the same thing uh, and you're not entirely sure if you will run out of filaments during this print, then I highly recommend to go into the other settings. And then you do have under the special modes, you can choose the print sequence. And instead of going by layer, you can go by object. Let's say that you would run out of filaments after like 90% of this entire print. Then that means that every single Benchy is going to be done only 90%. So everything is going to be ruined. Now, this way of printing do come with its own kind of limitations. You cannot start to print that many items, especially not taller items, but it's amazing for smaller prints, especially if you do have a very limited amount of filament left on a spool and you have no idea how many items you can actually print. What I do in that case is that uh, I launch up these filament clip little uh, designs that I use on every single on my spool. So what you want to do is that you put these objects on the plate uh, and you see these blue little squares that's actually how much space it needs in order to not bump into the other objects here so it does require a lot more space because it's gonna have one object done before it actually starts to print the other one but since we do know all the shortcuts we just highlight everything and we press a to arrange it and here we do have these 10 filament clips all spread out on this plate but with now the print by object that means that it literally going to print all of this until the filament runs out but 
if you do run out after 90%, that means that nine out of 10 of these clips will be done and will be perfect, uh, but it will just be nine instead of 10. This print by object, highly recommend when your spools look like this and you just literally want to make use of every last gram that you still have. That was actually everything I had planned for this video. Uh, I don't know how, how basic and how beginners it was, but hopefully you still found it useful. And I actually already planned a whole video series just like this, hopefully taking it to a little bit more advanced level next time. But something else after that that I'm even more excited about is to show you the top 10 ways of processing STL files. If you do need to make some small of adjustments or maybe combine it in with using, for example, Tinkercad or some other 3D softwares as well. I just found out the best way. So if that is something that you want to see, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Remember the rule we have here. If I taught you a single new thing, then please do remember to subscribe to support me on my new 3D printing career. So hopefully we can talk with some more brands and maybe make some more collaborations to make even more bigger, better and more interesting videos here about 3D printing. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. Start with Alice and like, ends with S, and subscribe. Please do both, and see you all in the next one.